I'm with uh, Hanna Masad, and we, we're here in Gaza talking about the situation in Gaza. What's life like here in Gaza? Um, life uh, is not uh, easy in Gaza, especially for uh, us as a Christian, um, especially after things changed here um, in Gaza. It's become, unfortunately, more pressure on, on the Christian. And you can experience this um, in every day uh, of your life. You didn't really have the freedom to be who you are and just to be yourself and to share uh, freely your faith and to live your life uh, um, as a Christian and just to reflect his love. Um, it's a uh, challenge in every day. What's a typical day like here? Oh, you know, one of uh, the difficulties here about the electricity, um, when you have it just eight hours um, out of the 24 hours, so you're concerned about the electricity, the uh, solar, the motor. Uh, uh, so this is uh, one of the difficulties um, uh, we, we face. And it just, um, unfortunately, uh, the people here become more religious, uh, uh, more militants, and uh, this is uh, put the pressure on us uh, as a Christian in every day of our life uh, as we try to reflect God's love uh, in the midst of the people we live uh, among. Now there is conflict here in the land. Do people here in Gaza know people who've died? Is it very close to the people here? Um, you mean people who died uh, from the Israeli invasion or... Um, yeah, um, because, you know, especially in the war a couple of years ago, about 1,400 people have uh, been killed and many people have been injured and uh, almost um, many, you know, many people have uh, been uh, affected by the war and just the fear. Uh, still people talk about that they never went through something uh, like this in their entire life. Um, uh, the time of the war was really very difficult time and very fearful time. Uh, affect affect um, every uh, group here in Gaza. Does it affect the children here? Are, are there many children suffering from psychological problems? Oh yes, yes. Uh, you know, as uh, they go to sleep uh, with uh, nightmares and uh, even uh, the adult, uh, you know, um, uh, a friend of mine told me, you know, he's in his 70s and he said um, at the time of the war, uh, this is the worst time I ever went through in Gaza. I never um, went through some difficult time. Even the war in 67 wasn't like that. So it's affected uh, deeply, not only the children, but uh, also the adult and the trauma, um, you know, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is still affecting uh, ma many people because um, uh, of, the, of the war. And also, you know, the siege here in Gaza, it's uh, Gaza 30 miles long, 7 miles wide, um, the most populated area in the world. You have 1.6 million people living in it. Um, so people usually ask me what it's like to live in Gaza, and basically I said um, i never been in prison, but I live in one uh, when I'm in Gaza. So Gaza, unfortunately, it's a huge uh, prison. Um, the only two exits we have with from the south was Egypt and from the north was Israel. And many people still not able to have the freedom to travel in and out uh, of Gaza. And uh you got Christians here in the community. How many Christians are there and what's life like for them? We have about 400 families, uh, Christian. This is in uh, Greek Orthodox, Catholic, and Evangelicals. And, you know, for us as a Christian, what is like, we live between two fires. We live the fire of the Israeli occupation because we are affected uh, like the rest of the people here, but also the other fire of the militant Muslims, who is very militant, and that affect our life and affect uh, how we live and our relationship. And it's not easy. Uh, women, for example, didn't have uh, full of freedom uh, just to go in and out and to walk freely in the streets um, without covering their head. Um, you will notice like everybody almost looking at you uh, as if you um, coming from different planet, uh, you look you look strange because most of the people here in Gaza are uh, covered. The ladies, I mean, covered their heads, and so it's uh, it's it's a big challenge. Uh, Gaza is not the same. Um, it's more populated now, and it's uh, people people become more religious, more militant, and. Um, 
this is in many ways uh, put the pressure on the young people uh, also in the universities um, uh, whereas other uh, Muslims sometimes want them uh, to become or to change their, their religion they want uh, the Christian to become a Muslim and uh, if the Christian is not strong enough uh, unfortunately uh, there is a big number been converted um, and left uh, even though in many ways they are nominal Christian but uh, unfortunately they converted to Islam and this uh, became very painful for the Christian community in Gaza and uh, it's the responsibility for the churches here to uh, to do something um, to help um, and to protect the Christian community and to be also blessing uh, for the wider community for the un-Christian as well when somebody converts to Islam, is it like a death in the family for the Christian community? Yeah, because uh, this person, uh, this man or this woman, uh, it's cut off from the rest of the community and uh, it's become I very isolated. And uh, yes, the Christian family uh, grieve uh, because uh, as if this person been died uh, and completely died of... Um, from the rest of the family. Now it is a very small community. Do all the Christians know all the other Christians within the community? Yeah, yeah. Many of them married from each other. They are in-laws and relate to to one another. So it's a very close community, and this is good. But also sometimes it's uh, it's difficult when uh, a small community, um, as if everybody know everything about. <laughs> there and that created uh, some uh, problems sometimes but in general you know it's, uh, it's a strong community but uh, these days are grieving um, it, this community has been hurt and uh, especially uh, the last uh, maybe six years I, see, I saw almost 30 uh, Christians uh, converted to Islam uh, from Gaza uh, with different problems with different challenges and uh, they're not able to do much uh, about this um, yeah. as a pastor that must be very difficult to see yeah it is uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, when you see one of the sheep is uh, going away and uh, going astray and uh, you want to do everything you can so this is why I think the churches here need to be prepared in advance before um, these problems uh, happen. What's the biggest need for the church today in Gaza? I think uh, it's very important because um, unfortunately many of the Christian community here in Gaza are nominal. They didn't really know uh, their book, they didn't know the Bible. And uh, they need uh, to learn uh, of course, first to have personal relationship with the Lord, to know their book, and to be educated um, concerning apologetics, apologetics in order to answer the questions uh, when they face from the community, the Muslim community, uh, questions like about the Trinity, that you Christian believe in three gods, so they need to know how to answer when they say the Bible is corrupted or you are people of blasphemy you need to become a Muslim. So the Christian need um, to know how to answer and to uh, express about the hope we have within, um, uh, who we are and what we believe, believe in. Um, because many young men, when they go to the university, they are empty. So anything been thrown at them, unfortunately, some of them uh, are taking that and uh, they lift uh, the faith of their parents and their grandparents. And uh, what's life like for the youth here in Gaza? You know, especially when they go to the universities, as I said, um, they um, they not feel uh, there's a lot of emptiness in their life, and they're not able uh, to have real discussion or valuable discussion with their friends, the Muslim friends. Um, but when they are satisfied and filled with the Word of God, then they're able to answer and have a real answer 
um, when they have an argument or discussion with the, with their friend about the Christian faith or about the Muslim faith, but unfortunately there's a lot of emptiness and uh, uh, the siege we live under here is affecting um, the life of the Christian community, affecting the life of the young uh, people because um, we not only isolated from the geographical point of view, but also we isolated um, mentally from the rest of the world. And the Christian young people continue to be filled what is already in Gaza, which is the influence of Islam. And because there is no openness to listen to other things, um, this is why, unfortunately, uh, many uh, many of them been affecting, uh, been affected by the Muslim cultures and the Muslim faith. So, this there is a lot of responsibility for um, the shepherds here, a lot of responsibility for the church um, to be the church and to to take uh, responsibility uh, to shepherd and to teach and to educate and to hold um, these precious men and women and just to be a blessing uh, for, for them, especially at this difficult time. So the isolation, I mean, the siege is not just isolated us but from the rest of the world, but also affecting the life and uh, the mentality uh, of the Christian young uh, men and women here in Gaza. Now you're also working in Jordan as well. What are you doing in Jordan? I'm pastoring uh, Iraqi refugee church. Um, you know, the Middle East has changed, not only here in Gaza, but all over the Middle East. And uh, many uh, Christians in the Middle East are leaving. Uh, 50, 60 years ago, you have about, uh, uh, about 30 million Christians all over the Middle East. But now you almost have half. Um, for example, in Iraq, there are many Iraqi Christians leaving Iraq because of persecution. And uh, if you remember, about a year and a half ago, four uh, men enter um, one of the churches um, in Iraq and they explode themselves, militants, Muslims. The Christian Iraqis who come to Jordan, we, where we minister, uh, there is a number of them used to go to that church and um, for example there is a lady um, who lost her son in that service um, so we um, have many people who um, experience persecuted we ministered about 250 families um, Iraqi refugees in, in Jordan we help them with relief work and also we meet every Tuesday um, as we teach the word and as we worship as we preach and as we disciple um, uh, the people who want to grow in their faith um, so this is what we do um, the ministry in Jordan uh, among the Iraqi refugees uh, because they come to Jordan for maybe a couple uh, of years uh, as a transition period uh, to be ready to immigrate to other countries because they're not able to go back to Iraq because their life became um, uh, in danger. Uh, so this is why they come uh, to flee the persecution. So this is uh, um, the ministry we have uh, to bring them in to share the good news um, disciple them and when the time come uh, to commission them to send them uh, to the new countries um, and uh, this ministry it's about 20 years old I start with the first Gulf War and uh, many pastors uh, came out of that church and uh, when they immigrated they able to plant new churches uh, in different countries uh, in Europe uh, Australia Canada US uh, so, so this is basically what we do um, among the Iraqi refugees in Iraq. And you're involved with the Bible College from Bethlehem here in Gaza as well. What are you doing there? Yeah, um, yeah, we have uh, extension uh, Bethlehem Bible College extension in Gaza where I teach uh, here. I come three times a year. I teach intensive uh, courses, and um, you know we have this um, extension um, since uh, year. I mean many years ago. But uh, when we evacuated in 07, um, we're not able to continue. But uh, 
um, this year we are able to start again and um, we have about uh, 20 students attending attending the course I taught about the Gospel of John. And this has been a blessing um, to continue to teach um, the students here in Gaza through Bethlehem Bible College. Um, so this has been a blessing and we hope uh, soon to start also program a project on the master level um, here in Gaza. Yeah. What's your prayer finally for Gaza for this area? Um, we pray um, that uh, our ministry be fruitful and we be blessing to uh, many people as we can. And also please pray for protection. Um, also pray that we be able to help the Christian families because the unemployment here are very high, about 40%. And they say 80% of the people in Gaza depend on the charities um, for food. So uh, through the ministry also, Christian Mission to Gaza, I do uh, food relief and medicine relief, helping the poor and the needy, uh, not only the Christian, but also the Muslims as well. Um, so. You know, just God help us uh, to be a blessing um, for the church and for the people here in Gaza. Okay, Hannah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings.